Vanity Fair's Maureen Ryan has a new book that blows the lid off harassment and bias in Hollywood. It also sheds light on problematic situations on certain shows and production companies. It's called Burn It Down, Power, Complicity, and a Call for Change in Hollywood. Maureen Ryan joins us live. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I, I, my mind immediately goes to the whole s story about casting couch and, and, and all that. Is, is it more than that? Well, I mean, I think you actually make a great point in the casting couch. What's going on there that we all kind of recognize is an abuse of power or perhaps an abuse of power. It's likely to be something maybe a little hinky. And I think that that kind of abuse of power is so endemic in Hollywood that even for myself as a critic, you know, I worked for the Chicago Tribune for a long time. I didn't see it for uh, for what it was for a long time. And I basically am trying to make the point that it's very important that we've had the Me Too movement and other reckonings like that. But identifying a problem is not the same as fixing it. And mm -hmm. that the, the problem is so baked into the very foundations of Hollywood that it's going to take a lot more work to actually fix it. Can you give us a couple of examples of, of what has not improved on maybe a couple of shows that you talk about specifically? Yeah, I mean, I wrote for in depth about the TV show Lost, which was very popular, and I certainly wrote about it a lot at the time and even afterwards. But I think what what I, I wrote about that, even though it went off the air, uh, air some time ago, because what it was is it's em emblematic of this kind of abuse of power paradigm, especially if something's critically acclaimed uh, and also a commercial hit, whether it's a film or a TV show, people are given a pass to run those productions however they want, just about. And Lost was both of those things. And I spoke to actors, writers, and other people who worked on Lost who said that they, uh, they, they told me about incidents that were frankly racist, um, sexist, and also just uh, demeaning and made them feel uh, like it really put some people, it put their mental health at risk in terms of an ongoing workplace dynamic. So, that kind of free pass for people who are famous and rich and powerful and have a successful production under their belt, that still happens. Is it any different, though, than any other uh, branch of corporate America? It is in that um, I think if you walk into your local grocery store, the manager of that store is not going to say to his employees, unless you're abusive verbally and physically with each other, we will not be able to sell food to people. You know, there's an expectation in Hollywood that creativity involves uh, physical, mental, financial abuse, and also exploitation and all kinds of unacceptable things that were put under this heading of creativity. You know, Scott Rudin was one of the most famous producers in the game. He produced films like The Hours and uh, No Country for Old Men, very acclaimed films that top actors would be in, but it was widely known for many years that he threw things at assistants, that he verbally mm. abused them. He wouldn't let them quit. You know, I, I spoke to one man whose twin brother, after working for Scott Rudin, uh, he actually died by suicide. And I've spoken to other people in the industry who left it, in part because their physical or mental health was seriously in danger. Talk about Saturday Night Live. We know Lorne Michaels has been in charge there for a very long time. Is it just, it's just a stressful environment or does it have to do with Lorne Michaels or what is it? I think it's always going to be a stressful environment when you're involved in the entertainment industry and there are these big budgets and a lot of eyes on people. I totally get that it's still going to be stressful. What we don't need is for a 15-year-old girl to fall into the orbit of uh, the cast of Saturday Night Live, which again, as you say, Lauren Michaels is really the sole uh, king of that world. There's no other real power in that whole realm. And I wrote in depth about many problems behind the scenes of Saturday Night Live, including this young, this young woman who in 2021 filed a civil lawsuit against SNL, alleging that you know at age 15, Horatio Sands, a cast member, was inviting her to parties at which she consumed alcohol she told me that she met Lauren Michaels, other people in the cast, in, including uh, Sands himself, knew that she was a high school student. And uh, sh so she filed that civil lawsuit. It got a certain amount of attention. And I report in my book that not only did she receive, uh, or not only was there, the case is now closed. 
um, it's my understanding that there was a settlement and she did not sign an NDA, by the way, mm. which is often how these things are swept under the rug. So I thought that was interesting. Real mm. quickly, before we let you go, the title of your book, uh, pretty strong words, burn it down, mean burn down Hollywood. What are you, what are you suggesting there? I'm saying let's burn down the assumptions that we have that to produce a commercially available TV show or film that people have to be systematically harmed, abused, or exploited for that to happen. And unfortunately, it still is baked into these institutions and norms. So we got to keep keep at it. That's my, my basic theory. <laughs> well, again, the book is called Burn It Down, Power, Complicity, and a Call for Change in Hollywood. And you can find Maureen on her site and on Twitter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.